Hello, hello, guys. Welcome back to Maison African Motives. Uh, still working on our power machines and five revisions. Uh, in this case, we shall be focusing on our impulse turbine. In this case, uh, working with the velocity diagram concept. Uh, so we are going to consider this example that we are given here a single stage uh, impulse turbine. Uh, so in our syllabus, we're going to consider a single stage. Uh, when you go to power machines N6, there we're going to have a double uh, in this case uh, and so on. So in this case, we are given it has an average blade velocity of 300 meters per second. The gas leaves the turbine at an angle of 50 degrees and the velocity coefficient is 0 0.76, 0 0.75. Uh, the blade inlet is uh, 26 degrees and the gas leaves uh, flows at a rate of uh, 48 kilograms per second through the turbine. The relative exit velocity of the gas is 600 meters per second. All right, then we are asked to use a scale of one centimeter in this case to represent 50 meters per second to construct a velocity diagram uh, and also to enter the values in meters per second that is for the velocities. All right, so let us just try to have a sketch. Remember I talk about an impulse turbine in this case. Uh, so remember what I referred to uh, from our impulse turbine that we, we just gonna have uh, a sketch to represent this. We're gonna have a shorter side at the exit and uh, the longer part here on our input or which is the inlet in this case, all right? Uh, having our blend uh, with the inlet to the blend and also the turbine with the outlet and the inlet to the turbine in this case, so having our blend and our turbine uh, in this case, all right. So we talked about this and uh, we just need a sketch with the information that we are given here. So we are given uh, the average blade speed being 300 meters per second. That is our average blade, which is our U in this case. So if you have to take note, our U is given as uh, 300 uh, meters per second. That is our blade uh, velocity. And also we are given the gas leaves the turbine here, yeah, this is where we have our turbine. It leaves at this point uh, of 50 degrees. So we are given our beta in this case, which is the exit to the turbine of uh, 50 degrees, uh, which is this angle. We are not having the inlet to the turbine, which is uh, our alpha in this case. We are not having this. Uh, all right, so that is uh, what you're given at that moment. And uh, also the coefficient of... Uh, friction, which is 0, 0.75. So the coefficient there is the coefficient of friction, which is 0, 0.75. We shall talk about this later on. Uh, and also the blade inlet being 26, that is the blade inlet angle to the blade in this case, that is here at the blade, we are given the inlet, which is our theta in this case of uh, 26 degrees. So that is uh, uh, 26 degrees. And uh, also, we are given the gas uh, flow flows at a rate of, so this kg per second, kg is mass. So we're talking about the mass, uh, which is given as uh, 48 uh, kilograms per, per second uh, through the turbine. And also the relative exit velocity, we are given the exit velocity in this case, uh, which is uh, when you have got the inlet and this is our exit. So we are given the relative exit of uh, 600 meters per second, all right? So that's 600 uh, meters per second. And also to consider the scale that we are given of one centimeter to represent 50 meters per second in order for us to have the actual diagram, we are supposed to use the scale of one centimeter representing uh, 50 meters per second. All right, so let us see how our diagram is going to look like. So from the information that we have, uh, the other thing that we can take into consideration to be part of our diagram in this case, uh, since we know that here we're going to have the relative inlet uh, velocity, in this case, we're going to have our absolute inlet velocity, uh, and also we're going to have the exit, which is our exit uh, absolute velocity. And also the wheel velocity, the velocity of flow, this and that, we shall fill in. But we can have or we can consider the coefficient of friction k uh, because we understand that the coefficient of friction k is equivalent to the exit relative velocity over the inlet. So I consider the exit to the inlet in this case, right? Exit to its inlet. 
that is uh, what we are having on our formula there. So if we are to consider this, we are going to see that uh, we can substitute what we have uh, K there, which is 0 0.75 uh, is equal to the exit. At the exit, we, uh, we, we have the value of 600 uh, meters per second, but we do not have the inlet uh, relative velocity. So we are going to calculate it from this. Uh, this is MS over one, so we can apply our cross multiplication. So we're gonna have 0 0.75, uh, which is equal to one times 600, which is uh, 600. So to find our relative inlet velocity, divide by 0 0.75, both sides by 0 0.75, uh, that was going to give us 800 uh, meters per second in this case. All right, so meaning to say, we have the relative inlet velocity as uh, 800 uh, meters per second. All right, so that was it from our uh, coefficient of friction just helped us to calculate uh, the relative inlet from the relative uh, exit velocity that we are given. All right, considering our scale and uh, so forth, we can have our diagram in this case. So let us have the instruments for drawing the actual diagram now. All right, so with our instruments here, uh, the first part that we are going to do is to just construct a line where we are going to have our blade and uh, turbine, in this case, separated uh, and so forth. All right, the other thing, uh, we are going to consider our scale there. All right, so we are going back to our scale. Uh, do not worry. All right, so this is what we are going to have at the end here. Yeah, that's it, guys. All right, so we're going to have something of this nature. And if we are to take into consideration here, what we need is the point, the starting point, uh, of the turbine and uh, this part of the blade, which is separated 300 meters per second. But in terms of our scale, we are given this as one centimeter represent 50 meters per second. So we divide 300 uh, divided by 50. So this is going to give us uh, six centimeters. So we are going to obtain uh, six centimeters here. We also do the same for our exit relative velocity divide by 50 we are going to obtain uh, 12 centimeters. Do the same thing for the inlet relative velocity, uh, which is 800 divided by 50. We are going to obtain uh, 16 centimeters. All right, so that's it. Uh, let us measure uh, six centimeters. As we can see here, we are going to need uh, six centimeters, all right? So this is our zero point. We're gonna mark a point at zero. And at six centimeters, you mark a point, all right? So this is what we need from this point and this point here. Uh, that is where we have our turbine and where we have our blade and we've got uh, the blade velocity U, uh, which is given as what? Uh, 300 meters per second. So in terms of length, this is what? Six centimeters in between. So you can indicate this. All right. So what you're going to do, it's, it's, it's from the sketch that you are having. Try to join in your values. If you have a sketch, it's going to be easier for you. So here you can measure 26 degrees uh, at this point of the blade. The inlet is 26 degrees in this case. All right. So 26 degrees uh, from this point uh, means we are going to have this angle in the clockwise direction. All right. So you're going to measure uh, 20 degrees. Make sure that you place this at the point of the blade and uh, measuring these angles in the clockwise. So we need uh, 26 so that is 0, 10, 20, 30. So meaning to say 26 is just after 25 years. We have 25, just one point after 25 there. So that is where we are going to have uh, 26 uh, degrees in this case, all right? So that's the point, uh, this point here. Sorry for that. Uh, sorry for that. I removed the information that this one, all right, I want this part here. So like I said, this is where we are going to have uh, 26 degrees. So as you can see, we are supposed to join from this point going down angle of 26 degrees, 16 centimeters. So this is what you're going to do from the table, from the blade across this point, uh, which is uh, 16 centimeters in this case. All right, so let us see what you are going to have at the end. Uh, this is what we are supposed to have uh, with an angle of uh, 26 degrees joining this point. Uh, so instead, because we know the length there that is 16 centimeters, we can actually measure this at the same time uh, as we are joining. You can join this at zero. This one, place it at zero there. So we're going to place it at zero like this. 
So as you can see, guys, according to my ruler here, 16 centimeters is at this point. That's where I have 16 centimeters. But I can just join, uh, as I'm joining from this point, I can just join extend it. But knowing that uh, my 16 centimeters is at this point here. So this is where I'm having my 16 centimeters uh, from that point uh, that we measured at what? at uh, 26 degrees. Remember, this was at 26 degrees. So there we have got our theta, the inlet to the blood, which is uh, 26 degrees. And also considering our inlet relative velocity there, which is uh, 800 meters per second, which is this whole six centimeters that we are talking about. So there we can consider our relative inlet velocity, which is uh, 800 uh, meters per second. So this is 800 meters per second. In terms of centimeters, this is the 16 centimeters that we measured. So this is uh, 16 centimeters, all right? So also, as we can see here is, uh, because we have a sketch, we can see that here is just joining to the, to the tapai, this line here, because already we have the point here at the tapai, and we have the point where 16 centimeters end. So what you're supposed to do is to make sure that you place your ruler at the tapine here and uh, until it joins this point. So you're supposed to make sure that you move your ruler until you can be able to join that point there. Uh, so let me just do this one properly. Uh, I'm just gonna move it properly. Do not worry for that. Uh, all right, all right, sorry for that guys. Let me try this way. So this is what I'm going to do uh, at this point. I need to extend. Okay, yeah, I need to extend, guys. All right, so there's something like this. I have to go back here. All right, extend uh, somewhere there, something like this. All right, something like this, as you can see. All right, so we are going to join. All right, so these are the points that we are going to, to, to have or to, to join in this case, all right? Yeah, I'm going to have this point up to this point. All right, so let me just use this one. So since we are having it as a single diagram, so let's not have it like we, it's not part of our diagram. This is part of our diagram. So let me have it this way. So that is it. Uh, and if you are to check here also, what we have to consider along this line also is uh, to have the, the size of the line in this case. So if we are to measure properly here from the zero point, here, as you can see, this is uh, 21,6. The direct at this point is going to be comma 6. So that is going to be 21,6 centimeters. All right. So there we have got 21,6 centimeters in terms of length. Remember, this is our inlet velocity, which is our absolute inlet. In terms of centimeters, we measured we got 21,6 centimeters. So we are supposed to write in meters per second now. So we multiply by 50. So if you multiply this by 50, we are going to obtain 1,080. Uh, that will be meters per second. So meaning to say here, we've got 1,080 meters per second, which was uh, this uh, uh, 21,6 centimeters. So that was your 21,6 uh centimeters in this case all right so at the end also as you are still working with this just finish up everything measure this angle also at the same time so we are going to measure uh the inlet uh to the blade which is uh, this angle here so if we measure we place this at the zero point like this we're gonna measure uh the angle that is uh following there so if we are to place this properly as we can see here, the angle here is going to be at uh, 19, because 20 is just outside. Uh, it's because that my the line that I'm using is too much, uh, is too big. So, so it's supposed to be uh, not that much, okay? So you're supposed to use a sharp pencil so that you obtain the exact angle. But as you can see, the exact angle is the one that is in the inner part there, which is uh, 19, just before 20. So it's 19 uh, degrees there, all right? So the angle is going to be 19 degrees. So that is our alpha in this case, which is the inlet of the blade or alpha is 19 degrees as we saw from our measurement. All right, so as you can see, as we are moving, we are moving step by step. What is that we are left with now? Uh, we are left with here, 
we know that from this point to this uh, at the exit, the angle is 50 degrees. So we can just measure our 50 degrees in this case, all right? So we are going to measure our 50 degrees from this point. This is uh, in the anti-clockwise direction. So 50, that's 0, 10, 20, 30, up to 50 here. So that's where we have our 50 degrees, all right? Let me just mark it properly. Our 50 degrees is somewhere there, all right? So at that point, you are just going to join uh, from uh, the turbine. You're passing this a point. You do not know exactly where your point is going to be. You do not know exactly where your point is going to be. So as you are joining, just uh, join in this case. Uh, just try to make a bigger line, okay? So you want to join from the turbine here, passing this point, all right? So I'm just going to extend this as much as I can, as much as I can, like this, all right? So that's somewhere here. Okay, so that's it. We can join from this point, uh, all right? So let's use this one. We're gonna join from this point. Just extend as much as you can this line. You do not know exactly where it is going to be at the end. So just try to extend it a little bit. So that is along this line here, along this line, the angle at the exit there, which is our beta is uh, 50 degrees. So how can we complete our diagram? All right, we are supposed to join here from this point to somewhere we do not know exactly, but how are we gonna join? We need to know the distance from this point to the line so that we can simply we have that on our ruler in this case, all right? So that is, um, we are going to do that. Uh, so we are given that from the blade here, the exit is 600 meters per second, which is 12 centimeters. So meaning to say, I'm just going to measure 12 centimeters in this case. This is what I'm going to do with my ruler. I need a point of 12 centimeters, all right? So I'm going to need 12 centimeters, which means somewhere at this point. So I'm going to place my 12 centimeters at B, which is the plan. So the distance that I'm going to use, let me uh, put it this way on top. The distance that I'm going to take from these 12 centimeters here is supposed to reach this line. So I'm supposed to extend until I reach the line at zero. So zero is supposed to be at the line. 12 at this point, then is zero on the line. So let's try to extend a little bit like this, all right? So that's 12 there and at this point. So this must be 12 and this must be at zero. So where it reaches the line, or you can use uh, a compass in this case, all right? You measure uh, 12 cent, but here it's because of this compass that I'm having is too small, so it won't be able to open up. But if you open up, you mark a point 12, that means you are going to simply join, all right? So with this part here to the point there, we are simply going to, to join these two points. That's we have completed our diagram in this case. So make sure that you are using a sharp pencil in this case, make sure that you are using a sharp pencil. And at the end also, we can be able to measure this distance at the same time because uh, remember, uh, in fact, we are not supposed to measure because already it's the one that we used to, to construct. Remember, this was what? Uh, 12 centimeters, all right? So this is our exit in this case, all right? So that's our exit velocity, relative velocity of 600 uh, meters per second, which is uh, 12 centimeters in this case. Remember, this was uh, 12 centimeters. And uh, we can also be able to measure this angle. So here, I think, uh, according to our information, uh, let's measure the exit of uh, the blade in this case, all right? The exit at the blade. So we are going to measure this angle at the exit, which is here at the blade. So we need this angle inner part in the inner part here. So measuring these angles from this point going to be 0, 10, 20. Just before 30, that's 25, 26, 27. So it's going to be at uh, 27 degrees in this case. Maybe yours is 28, but as you can see, mine there is corresponding at uh, 27 degrees, all right? So this is our phi in this case, which is the exit of the blade, which is uh, 27 degrees, all right? That's 27 uh, degrees, this angle here is going to be 27, or let me just write it as aside 27 degrees on top like this. All right, so we've got uh, 
all the angles that we need uh, in this case, uh, the inlet, the blade, the exit, the, uh, the turbine here, which is the nozzle angle and the exit. All right, so what you're going to need at the end here is to measure this distance from this point to this point for our exit velocity in this case, which is our absolute velocity. So we are going to measure this part here. So meaning to say we're talking about uh, the exit in this case, all right? So meaning to say uh, this is going to be something like uh, at the exit there, seven centimeters, all right? Let me put this at uh, 7,1. So we multiply by 50. Uh, if you multiply uh, 7,1 or 7 by 50, it was going to be 355 meters per second. So we are going to have this at um, uh, our exit, that's 7,1 centimeters. So as we measured there, so this one, uh, multiply it by 50. But remember the scale, it's one centimeter, 50 meters per second. So you are supposed to multiply back by your, your scale. So if you multiply, sorry for that, if you multiply by the scale 50, it is going to be, 355, 355 meters per second. Remember, we said this is 7,1. We measured together this one, we got uh, 7,1 centimeters. So if you are using your instruments accurately, these values, they will be accurate. I don't want to lie. They will be actually accurate to what you are given in this point. They will be actually accurate. So it's, 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 a, it's a matter of you using sharp pencil uh, on your construction, make sure that everything is uh, is uh, is direct and also on your ruler place your ruler properly uh, as you are measuring all right so the other thing that we are going to need uh, are the flow velocity and the wheel velocity so here you are going to construct at 90 degrees so make sure that you construct with your protractor at uh, 90 degrees but uh, if we construct this at 90 degrees it means we are going to have the flow, uh, the velocity of uh, the flow in this case at the exit in this case, all right? This is the velocity of the flow at the exit. And also you can be able to measure up this distance. Uh, as we can see, this is five, five comma four. That's before five comma five. So this is five comma four centimeters, all right? So at the flow, uh, at the exit in this case, we are talking about, um, uh, the exit flow velocity. Uh, in terms of centimeters, we say this is 5,4. So it's going to be 5,4 centimeters. Multiply by 50, it was going to be 270 meters per second. So it would be 270 meters per second, which is 5,4 centimeters, all right? You do the same thing uh, at the inlet, in this case, at the inlet, all right? Uh, at the inlet here, you are supposed to do uh, the same thing to the horizontal line in this case at 90 degrees, all right? At uh, 90 degrees, you're supposed to do this at 90. So this part we are supposed to extend. Remember, that's why I was saying this, you are supposed to be careful when you are, when you are presenting because uh, you need this extended part from the previous part that you had, all right? So if we just extend so that they will meet, at a certain point here, then uh, we can be able to measure this line also uh, at the end. We are supposed to measure and see what is the distance uh, between here. All right, so my centimeters, they're taken to the other hand now. I'm gonna, it's going to be difficult for me. Uh, let me put it this way as uh, 270. Maybe I'm going to win. I don't know. Uh, 90, 180, to Sorry for that, guys. I just want to have my centimeters on the other hand. Or oh, let me rotate it this way so that we see our centimeters here. All right, so these are um, our mm -hmm. centimeters on this side. So you're going to measure uh, this on your ruler. Uh, this one, as we can see here, it is direct at uh, seven. This is seven centimeters there. So only that this value, they are too small, but it's at seven. So that's it. Uh, this is at uh, seven centimeters. We need to say we have got uh, the flow velocity at the inlet. 
uh, seven centimeters, we are supposed to convert to meters per second. So we use the scale 50 centimeters, 50 meters per second. So 50 times seven, it was going to give us 350 meters per second, which is uh, seven centimeters in this case, all right? So that's it. Uh, as you can see, also we need uh, from this point to this point, which is our wheel velocity, and also we're gonna need uh, two things uh, on our wheel velocity. So it's good that, uh, or it's best that you extend these lines. So let me start by extending my lines or I can just extend them after drawing this, all right? So we're gonna need the wheel velocity uh, in between here. I'm going to extend, don't worry. So here I'm gonna extend later on. So here we're gonna need uh, the part that represents our wheel velocity across here. All right, so like I was saying, I'm just gonna extend uh, these ones. So, so I'm not supposed to even zoom in or out because it changes my measurements. So that's why I'm still focusing on this diagram as it is. All right, so here, I just want us to extend this here, to extend from this point of our, our uh, exit. Uh, flow velocity. So if we just extend here, and also we're gonna need extend here at the turbine. All right, just extend going down from the turbine and also extend at uh, the entry part here, extend also here. All right, so by extending these, we are going to obtain uh, the total wheel velocity from this point up to this point here. This is our uh, total wheel velocity. Measure this part uh, properly. So if you measure, you are going to obtain uh, 29,4 in this case. So 24,9 centimeters uh, multiplied by 50, you obtain 1,254 meters per second. So that's how you can have this. And also in between here, we, it means here we are going to have the flow velocity, uh, the wheel velocity exit uh, from this point up to the end here, we are going to have the wheel velocity at the inlet. Uh, these ones, they are best to measure if you are required for you to measure, but uh, if not, just give us the value, give us this one for the what? For the wheel velocity, the total wheel velocity. So that's how your diagram is supposed to be like. Uh, this information is important, is enough, I mean, this information alone is enough. So from your inlet in this case, so now I can just zoom uh, uh, it was now we have now we are done with our diagram. So this is how our diagram was going to look like at the end with the, all the values indicated given. As you can see, as we saw, as we are measuring together, we're obtaining exact values. So sometimes you can obtain slightly uh, the value not accurate to the one that you are given. Uh, use those values that you are obtaining, all right? So that was it. Uh, let's check the first uh, question. After this, we are now asked to use the diagram to determine the following, uh, the nozzle angle in this case. So the nozzle angle is our alpha, which is 19 degrees. That is our, at the tape by near inlet. Uh, so that's your nozzle angle, uh, 19 degrees. Then uh, the velocity of gas leaving the nozzle in this case, which is the velocity, um, leaving the nozzle in this case remember we are considering from the so we are talking about uh, this uh cia which is the uh it will be the inlet to the turbine in this case all right uh which is our cia uh of uh, 1080 meters per second then the velocity of gas leaving the turbine now leaving the turbine so take note on this part we are not talking of the turbine when you are leaving the turbine uh, the nozzle we are considering from this concept and leaving the nozzle. So we are considering the inlet. When leaving the turbine, we are now considering uh, at the exit. Why am I writing I here? This is exit there. That's an E there. All right. So we are going to consider the exit part. This is the one uh, leaving the turbine. All right. So that's exit, uh, which is uh, 355. All right. Meters per second already we calculated these. Uh, then the bled outlet, here it's our bled. So the outlet we said is 27 there, which is phi in this case. So phi there was uh, 27 degrees. 
uh, the relative inlet uh, velocity, the relative inlet, which is our relative inlet, we calculated this uh, before, which is 800 uh, meters per second. So our relative uh, inlet is uh, 800 meters per second. Then the power delivered or the power developed in this case by the turbine in the megawatts, the power that is being developed. All right, so the power in this case, I want you to consider this here. Uh, on your formula sheet, this is what you have, guys. Uh, do not waste much time of these formulas. They just want to disturb us. Uh, for the power we are given, that the power can be taken from the difference of the inlet wheel minus the exit of the wheel in this case. But together, this whole part here is the total wheel velocity. So on your diagram already, you measured the wheel velocity. So use this formula as the wheel velocity. They, want, they just want to confuse you there because you are going to subtract this and that, and you end up having uh, wrong values from there. All right, so like I was saying, uh, the formula that we are supposed to apply or the formula that we are supposed to use is simply power is equivalent to the mass, which is measured in kilogram per second times the blade velocity in this case times, uh, we are going to multiply the total of the wheel velocity. All right, so that is it. We have this mass in kg per second. It must be in kilogram per second. All right, uh, let's check the mass, how it is given. Uh, this is kilogram per second, 48 uh, kilogram per second. So we are going to have uh, 48 times uh, the mean blade velocity, which is our U. Remember our U is 300 meters per second. So you're gonna have 300 times uh, the wheel. In this case, we are talking about the wheel velocity, which is the total wheel velocity. Here we got uh, 1,254 meters per second. So that's 1,254. So we've got uh, 1,254 uh, meters per second. So this is going to give us the power, which is going to be something like uh, one seven. So we're going to obtain one seven nine uh, two eight zero 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 like this, all right? So this is the power in watts, but we are given to give this power in megawatts. So how do you convert to megawatts? You divide by 1 million in this case, or you multiply by 10 to the exponent of negative six. So that is going to be six here, which is going to be 17 comma nine to eight in uh, megawatts. So we divide by mega, which is 1 million. All right, so that's it uh, from this formula. Uh, like I said, sometimes they just want you to be confused from the formulas that you are given. And here we are given the actual thrust of the turbine in kilonewton, all right? So the actual thrust is simply uh, our the force in this case, all right? Again, from your formula sheet, I want you not to be confused there because if you check the formula that they gave you there, if you consider this formula, uh, it is given as, uh, uh, from our FC here, it's the mass into the exit flow minus uh, the inlet flow in this case. All right. If you are to consider this, you are, because always uh, when you are dealing with uh, a, 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 an impulse turbine, your inlet uh, velocity flow is greater than the exit velocity flow in this case, it's greater than. So if we are to use this formula, we are going to have a negative answer at the end. So not to have this, we are supposed to have the greater value, which is the inlet minus the exit in this case. If we do this, we get a positive value or you calculate that, get a negative, but at the end, write your answer as a positive. That is our actual thrust formula. So like I said, we can have this as the mass into uh, the inlet minus the exit, or you use this as a minus of the negative or the minus of the mass. I don't know what you're gonna have, or you use it as it is, you get a negative, but know that the answer there is supposed to be, you take it as a positive, all right? So that's the mass in this case, in a kilogram per second, remember our mass in kilogram per second was uh, 48 uh, into the initial, which is the inlet, uh, flow velocity here, we measured this, uh, the inlet, it was 350. The outlet is 270, so it's 350 
minus 270 in this case, all right? So this is going to be 350 uh, minus 270. All right, that's it. We are done. We are obtaining our actual thrust in this case. So this was going to be 3,840 Newton. All right, 3,840 Newton. But we are given to leave this answer in kilo Newton. All right. So in kilo Newton, divide by 1,000, we're going to obtain 3,84 uh, kilo Newton in this case. All right. That's how you calculate the actual thrust. So meaning, if you are dealing with an impulse turbine, it is the one with the actual thrust, all right? And impulse turbine is the one with the actual thrust in this case, all right? The one with actual thrust. Uh, we are going to be focusing with the, another part whereby we do not, we are talking about a reaction turbine there, whereby there is no actual thrust without actual thrust. So without actual thrust, uh, that's a reaction turbine. But for an impulse turbine, it, it is the one with the actual thrust. If you calculate it, you get a certain value. But for a reaction turbine, if you calculate your actual thrust, you're going to obtain a zero because you're saying it has without, without, uh, it has no actual thrust, All right? So that is what we had, guys. Let us continue to revise as much as we can as we prepare ourselves for the exams which are ahead of time.